Hello, this is a comparison video between the Mobile 146 versus 1911 Large. So this would be a cool comparison considering I've had some people ask about it. Even though they're not in the same market per se, in terms of price, they're still very comparable. Now let's get to the comparison. In terms of just the looks, they both have a cigar style. They both have stiff clips, similar clip design as well. And as you can see by size, they have similar thickness, but the 146 is a little bit longer. Now in terms of the nib and the nib section, as you can see, they have similar nib sections. Pretty much they don't flare out either and pretty much similar nib size as well. The biggest difference between these two is essentially comes down to the filling mechanism. They buy plastic feeds and the 1911 large is a monotone nib, whereas the 146 is a gold tone nib, a uh, two tone nib. As you can see, in terms of holding it, 1911 large is very good balance with the cartridge converter and it's very lightweight. So is the 146 because it's a plastic piston, so it's also lightweight and they're both made out of fully resin pens. When you post them, as you can see, 146 is a little bit longer, but not that much. And when it's uncapped, the 146 is slightly longer as well. This is how it feels when you're posting it. The 146 isn't fully balanced, but it's still comfortable. If it was a brass piston, then it would be more balanced in my opinion. And the 1911 large is pretty goodly balanced. I think it's because of the converter. Now, in terms of giving an idea of what they measure up in comparison to other pens, have pens that are in the same market, which is M805 and, and Podcast M83, which is the same market for the 1911 large and the 146. In terms of mechanism, the 146 is a piston filler, so it holds more ink. It holds about 1.1 millimeters of ink, whereas the 1911 large holds about, I think like a regular cartridge converter, but cellular converters are smaller than usual, similar to platinum, they're not that they don't hold that much ink. This holds probably like 0.7 millimeters of ink. And sometimes the I don't really like cellular converters at all at all because it doesn't like work as efficiently as it should. I wish they had like converters like the pilot converters. Now in terms of writing, 146 is a 14 karat gold nib compared to the Sailor 1911 large, which is a 21 karat gold nib. Even if you think the 21 karat gold nib is more gold content, it would be softer, but that's not the case. If you know anything about Sailor, it's that they're stiff nibs, and that goes for, this goes same for the 146. This is a stiff nib. There's no line variation, and you will have feedback not just audible, but physical feedback as well. And that is expected of modern nibs because they're known for that. Whereas their older nibs were more soft, but their modern nibs are stiff nibs. They're smooth still, but they have more feedback than the previous ones. In terms of how it compares to the 1911 large, the M46 nib is just reliable. And it doesn't have that much feedback in comparison, but it still has enough feedback in comparison to like M805 or whatnot. So if you like pens that are like stiff, that you can write for a long time without having to worry about spreading the tines, then it's a good choice for you. In terms of reverse writing, this is now made for that. It's very scratchy. It's not really meant for it. And in terms of line variation, there's no line variation with the 146. It's a stiff nib. And that's about it. In terms of the wetness, this is a medium wetness pen. Mobile nibs tend to be on the wet side. In this case, it's not actually too wet. It's actually on the medium wetness. Now let's get into the CL 1911 large. The CL 1911 large demonstrated version is 21 karat gold nib 
This is a fine nib compared to the medium nib of the Mont Blanc. This nib, as you can see, is very thin. This is Japanese nib, so it's, it's going to be thinner than the Western counterparts. The 21 karat gold nib is a joy wear with if you like pencil type feedback. That's what Sailor is known for. They're known for the smooth pens that have a lot of horrible feedback. They don't have any like physical feedback from my perspective. The way you can tell is you can just have headphones on and write with your pens. If you feel feedback when you're writing physically, then it's just physical feedback. But if, you, if it's just very smooth, then it's just audible feedback. In terms of the neck level large, it's mostly audible feedback. It's mostly the pencil type feedback that you feel audibly. But in terms of just writing with it, it's very enjoyable to write with. It's very smooth, and I enjoy this nib more than that, more than the Montblanc nibs, just because the feel is just better. But if you don't like oral feedback, then it's not a good choice for you. In terms of rush writing, it's not actually that bad, and there's no line variation with this pen either. And in terms of wetness, this is a little bit on the drier side, which I had adjusted, so it's a little bit more wet now, but does come like a little bit dry. This is the side view of both of these pens for people that enjoy that. As I mentioned, the 146 is just a gorgeous nib and it's a reliable pen. If you want a pen that you can count on and don't really care about feedback and just like how it writes in terms of just being reliable, then it's a good choice for you. And also, most people who get mobile nibs are not really mobile pens are not really getting it for the nib. They're usually getting it for the status symbol and that snow cap logo. If that's the case, then just know that you have a reliable pen on top of having this social status symbol. Now let's get into the 1911 March. The demonstrator finish of this pen is kind of disappointing because the, the middle area is clouded and the cap is also clouded too. So it's not fully demonstrated. It's the same problem I had with the Pilot Custom Easy 3 demonstrator. I wish it was fully transparent. It would make the pen way better. And I wish they put a bigger converter because Sailor converters are just bad. They don't hold that much ink and they have the same size converter in their King of Pen line as well, which makes no sense even though there's so much more space. Let's get into the pros and cons. Let's start with the 146. One pro of the 146 is the hard 14 karat nib. It's a reliable nib, as I mentioned, so you have no problem with that. There's slight feedback, but it writes smoothly and it's a reliable nib. But expect feedback more than usual nibs. Next is the piston filler. It holds a lot more ink than 1911 large because of the piston filler, so it's convenient and having more ink. Next is that it's very difficult to clean. What I mean is, as you can see, those two holes you see is where tools are inserted to unscrew the obsession. But they don't come with it, you can't do it by hand, you, have, you need special tools. So it's very difficult to clean because you can't just flush out the nib section alone by unscrewing it. So you have to keep on using the piston filler mechanism to clean this pen and flush this pen, which can be very annoying. Another factor to having a mobile pen is its social stats. Whenever you have a mobile pen, whenever anyone sees the Snowcap logo, they think you have an expensive pen. It's known for having a business feel in the world where people in the business world carry mobile pens for social stats. If that's what you want, then you will definitely accomplish that with this pen. And lastly, the price. This is a $870 retail pen. So this is a special edition compared to the regular gold versions or regular platinum trims. So this is more expensive, but you can get a secondhand on about $400 or like around $600 for brand new. So it's very expensive. But if you want a expensive SAS symbol, then there's no other brand to go to besides the Montblanc. Another con for Mont Blanc is that it has a plastic piston. They used to have brass pistons, now it's a plastic piston, so it's not actually fully balanced in my opinion. 
and also it's not as reliable as a result. I wish they had kept the brass pistons which would make it more reliable and make it a more balanced pen. Now let's get into 1911 large. It has a hard 21 carat nib which is reliable with pencil type feedback if you like that and it's a cartridge converter. The problem with that is it's not that I don't like cartridge converters just I don't like sailor cartridge converters because they're not that easy to clean. It's easier to clean than the 146 but it's just a pain like the camera pen is difficult to clean even as a cartridge converter but 1911 large is easy to clean. In general I wish they had better converters for sailor I don't like their converters. Similar with the Platinum, I don't like their converters either. I wish they had better converters than the ones they have, which holds very little amount of ink. And lastly, the price. The, you can get, it can go from 200 to 272 brand new for this demonstrated version. You can get it even cheaper secondhand. I'm pretty sure like 180, something like that from Japan directly. But as you can see, there's a vast difference in price between these two. But I actually don't think there's a big difference between these two. The only difference is probably much the price and the film mechanism. But if you're looking for just the size of the nib, how the pen writes, how the pen holds, and whatnot, they're very comparable. And in my opinion, I would always go with the 1911 large because even though it holds little ink, it still writes better in my opinion. Sailor nibs are not for everyone. If you do not like feedback at all, then you should never have a sailor nib because it has a lot of horrible feedback. But if you like that pencil type feedback, then this is a great choice for you. And if you like minimum feedback, but just as you know that you're writing, then 146 nibs are great for you and it's a piston filler. So you can't go wrong with either. In my opinion, I like the 1911 large more than the 146. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.